Welcome to Unpasteurized, Raw Perspectives from a Former Christian. Let's talk about Good Friday. What is it? What does it mean to Christians? And what specifically makes it good? In calendar terms, Good Friday simply refers to the Friday immediately preceding Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, of course, is the Christian Holy Day, in modern English, holiday, or festival on which Christians celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Because Christianity is firmly rooted in corroborated historical facts, the exact calendar date of Jesus' scientifically proven resurrection is well known and always celebrated on the same weekend every year. Whoops. Uh, it seems there may have been at least one error in my previous sentence. Easter isn't celebrated the same weekend every year. It kind of moves around the spring season, landing anywhere between March 22nd and April 25th. But that's only for Protestants and Roman Catholics. Easter comes even later in the year for approximately 220 million Eastern Orthodox Christians because Christians as a whole can't even agree which calendar to use. Now, why would that be the case if Christianity was firmly rooted in corroborated historical facts? Why would the date of Jesus' scientifically proven resurrection change from year to year? And for that matter, why does the date of Easter move at all? And why does this supposedly Christian holiday, invoking pagan fertility symbols like eggs, flowers, and bunnies, take its name from the goddess of spring of a completely different religion? Every time a Christian says, Happy Easter, are they unknowingly praising this other goddess and repeatedly infuriating Jesus, or Yahweh, or Yahweh's father, Elion? As fascinating as I find those questions and their answers, this video is about Good Friday. However, I thought it might be helpful to at first highlight the inconsistencies surrounding this Christian festival, at least this festival that appears Christian after all the opposing faiths, religions, and perspectives have been rigorously stamped out by the political, financial, and military hegemony of the church. At a glance, Good Friday might just seem like a fun name given to the Friday going into a long holiday weekend. Fridays in general are celebrated in our culture as the end of our five-day work week, but that's not the case. In fact, Good Friday is the name given to the Friday on which Christians observe the crucifixion and death of Jesus of Nazareth. The premise of Christianity is, at least in this instance, that torturing a man to death is somehow good. Furthermore, Christianity asserts that this is no random occurrence in which Jesus was tortured for no reason, nor does Christianity acknowledge any guilt of Jesus as an upstart rabble-rouser and apocalyptic preacher who taught that the end of the world was imminent and that most people would suffer for the sole crime of not worshiping him. For anyone lacking Jesus' good press in the modern world, this seems like the behavior of a pretty hateful cult leader. The only thing excusing his behavior is just assuming that he is blameless before you hear any parts of the story for which he should be held accountable. Christianity does not bother teaching that Jesus was crucified as a legal consequence of violating the Roman law. The people crucified next to Jesus were also crucified for violating Roman law. The people crucified on the day before and the day after Jesus' crucifixion were also crucified for violating Roman law, as were the people crucified in the weeks before, the weeks after, and in the years before, and the years after. According to this scattered collection of anonymous scroll fragments collectively known to modern indoctrinated congregations as the Gospels, Jesus is supposedly blameless even though he literally broke the law according to those same stories. And not just Roman law, but Jewish law. He's constantly in trouble for this throughout the so-called Gospels. But if you assume from the jump that anything he does is okay, somehow you can make this lifelong criminal seem like the good guy. If you assume that anything he does is divine, then even the worst thing he does is done, supposedly, for a good reason. Same goes for his presumed father, 
Yahweh, who in the New Testament is an invisible, intangible entity that cannot interact with humanity except for producing a half-divine, half-human hybrid offspring like Hercules or Bacchus or Perseus or Romulus or Remus or Jesus, even though in the Old Testament this same entity was perfectly capable of walking on earth and talking with humans and cheating at wrestling. In general, if men or deities torture someone or end their life or torture someone so badly that the victim's life is ended, we as a society consider that bad, evil, reprehensible, not to be emulated. But if you throw around the word God and then tell your story about torture and death, everything about the story is supposed to be wonderful and good. The Christian story posits that their deity, or God, Yahweh, is the father of Jesus, just as the deity Jupiter is posited as the father of Hercules, or the god Zeus is the father of Perseus. The Christian story further posits that Jesus' dear old dad came up with a plan to torture Jesus and by that method unalive Jesus as some sort of agreement with humanity to forgive humanity for failing to live up to whatever standards for humanity Yahweh has. So this story isn't just a story about a man being randomly tortured to the end of his life, nor is it a story about a lifelong criminal facing consequences for his actions. It's the story of a father torturing his son to the end of his life. That's the role model for all Christians. A father for whom abuse and torture are not merely acceptable, they are integral to his plan. A father for whom his son is merely a sacrificed chess piece in a game he's playing against himself. And this sacrifice is so important, so critical, so central to the ideas of Christian theology, so meaningful that the whole thing will be completely reversed in three days. None of this makes any sense when examined from an outside perspective, which is the one thing Christian teachers hope you won't do. The one thing they teach their followers never to do is examine it. Torture and blood magic sacrifice, that's okay. The kind of white man giving that reverses the sacrifice and takes it back in three days, also okay. Examining your stories and principles to find inconsistencies, flaws, or dangers, that's not okay. In short, the reason Good Friday is good is because you are never supposed to challenge the idea that it is good. Otherwise, you also will be tortured, and not for a few hours, but forever. This is what Christians call love.